Coming in at number 10 today is Batman and Oliver Queen. In the exceedingly famous Dark Knight Returns story, we see what is arguably one of the best Superman vs. Batman fights to ever grace comic books. In the last issue, number four, it pits an aged Bruce Wayne against a Superman that has become a puppet of the government. During the fight, Superman has been weakened by a nuclear explosion, hunter missiles, a tank, a sonic device that makes his nose bleed, and Batman even uses every watt of the city's power to electrocute Superman's brain. Batman then socks Superman straight across the face a few times and shoots acid into his face, but then Oliver Queen, Green Arrow, shoots an arrow made of kryptonite at the Man of Steel while upside down with his one remaining arm and his teeth while dangling from a fire escape. It sounds nuts. While Superman catches the arrow, it still weakens him, which is when he takes a studded bat boot to the jaw. Batman then seemingly passes to the pearly gates from a heart attack. Even at 55 though, Bruce Wayne left Superman battered and bleeding, and the whole thing was just a ruse. Well played. Number nine, Wonder Woman Dead Earth. This comic picks up an apocalyptic wasteland in what used to be Gotham City. Now deep down in the remnants of the Batcave, Wonder Woman had been kept alive in a containment unit and was awoken by a group of humans who were running from a mutated monster known as a Hydra. After saving the humies and liberating their city, she journeys to Themyscira only to find out that the Hydra are actually her fellow Amazons mutated by atomic radiation after the Amazons had decided to go to war with the rest of humanity who had driven the Earth to its breaking point. The world had basically bombarded Themyscira with nuclear fire, even though Diana used the absolute limits of her powers to try and stop it. Now when Superman, who fought for humanity, turned up to try and explain why he couldn't have helped her, we see just how powerful this Wonder Woman is. Losing complete control of herself, Wonder Woman and Superman fought each other to the point of causing a great fire that plunged the world into the apocalypse. And at the end of that fight, Wonder Woman, who was double fisting some kryptonite, brought Superman to his final rest with a hole straight through the chest. Number eight, Injustice Wonder Woman. The Injustice comics are packed with intense battles, but the confrontation between Wonder Woman and Superman in the eighth issue of Injustice Gods Among Us year four, orchestrated by Batman, is particularly memorable. Due to a deal struck up with the gods that is then refused and countered by Wonder Woman, who is working alongside Superman, she instead demands a trial by combat. And after Superman volunteers to represent his side of things, Wonder Woman is chosen by Batman as the combatant to face Superman. Now being a warrior born, in a fight to the death, she is honor bound to go all in. It is a brutal showdown. The two warriors initially appear evenly matched, but then Superman gains the upper hand, somehow. Despite Superman's plea for Diana to surrender, her refusal to yield becomes his downfall. Wonder Woman intensifies her assault, leveraging her superior combat skills and exploiting Clark's moment of hesitation. Wonder Woman gouges Superman's eyes and in a swift move, she completely shatters his arm with a strong elbow like, like that, marking one of the most brutal conclusions to their long lasting history of clashes. Despite Superman's desperate attempts to retaliate, deploying all the power he has, he is relentlessly overpowered and ultimately knocked out cold. At number seven is Thor. Our thumbnail today has literally the coolest backstory. You see, in the comics, you'll notice a certain god of thunder was missing from the entire Civil War ordeal. That's because at the time, Thor was deceased, but not for long, of course, because this is comic books we're talking about. Now, during this time, Iron Man was kind of the big shot running the show at S.H.I.E.L.D. and taking charge after winning the first Civil War. Captain America seemed out of the picture and Stark even made a clone of Thor which he used to lie to the whole world saying Thor supported his cause. Then Thor came back and well, he was not happy. He rebuilt part of Asgard over the White House and Iron Man rolls in thinking he'd get Thor to join his team and follow the government's orders but Thor is just not having it, especially with Iron Man acting all bossy and making clones of him and whatnot. So Thor shows him what's what. He thrashes Iron Man's super fancy suit, striking him multiple times with lightning and leaving him defenseless. Gripping Tony by the throat, Thor reminds Tony just who's a god and who's the puny mortal. Iron Man tries to smooth things over by offering diplomatic immunity for Asgard, but with his most powerful suit now completely trashed, Tony ends up hitching a ride back to town in the back of a pickup truck. At number six is Scarlet Witch. Tony Stark's genius mind has led him to create some incredible armor, but he hasn't been able to engineer a suit impervious to magic. Enter Scarlet Witch. In What If Avengers Disassembled, the Avengers rush to Genosha to halt Scarlet 
Scarlet Witch and Captain America's world-ending plan. Scarlet Witch effortlessly robs Iron Man of his armor and sends him in the air with her magic, ending the confrontation pretty instantly. And in another clash, Avengers issue number three, Scarlet Witch now embodying famine, unleashes her chaos magic, stripping Tony of his armor yet again. Even after getting his armor back, her magic disrupts it, leaving Tony ineffective for the rest of the battle, saved only by Spider-Man's intervention. At number five is Black Panther. Despite Tony's high-tech armor and knack for predicting attacks, T'Challa has caught him off guard multiple times. Black Panther's smarts and martial arts skills put him way ahead of the fight. In Black Panther number 45, T'Challa pulls off a surprise move using Mr. Clean, yes, the household cleaner, on Iron Man. The ammonia in it messes up Tony's stealth armor, and T'Challa goes old school by tracking him down by scent. But the kicker here is that he momentarily stops Tony with the Ultron virus, technically knocking out Iron Man cold. At number four is the Hulk vs. Iron Man from Original Sin. See, in this one, Bruce Banner delves into his past through Utatu's eye, peering into his own origin story from this omnipotent perspective. He actually witnesses Tony's hand in sabotaging the Gamma Bomb, and therefore was directly responsible in triggering the blast that first turned Bruce Banner into the Hulk. And let's just say Bruce wasn't too happy about it. Driven by rage, Bruce enhances himself using the extremist virus to retain his intellect as the Hulk. He then confronts Tony, and despite Tony's lack of memory about sabotaging the Gamma Bomb, a brutal fight ensues where the Hulk, now maintaining his smarts, overwhelms Tony, obliterating his specially designed Hulkbuster armor with a single blow. Iron Man's only escape from the Hulk's wrath is to flee and suit up in new armor to survive the confrontation. At number three is the Winter Soldier, a victim of brainwashing, but Steve Rogers, aka Cap, helped him break free from that brain control and remember who he was, Bucky Barnes. And in a pivotal moment following Steve's apparent demise after Civil War, the Winter Soldier sought retribution against Iron Man, blaming him for Steve's demise. The showdown between them escalated swiftly with Iron Man struggling defensively against the Winter Soldier's calculated moves. Using an electromagnetic pulse, Iron Man tried to fend off his assailant, but the Winter Soldier's strategic maneuvering led to Tony's suit malfunctioning. Cornered and unmasked, Tony faced a chilling moment with a pew pew pointed right at his noggin. However, leveraging Steve's letter, Tony managed to negotiate for his life, ultimately paving the way for Winter Soldier to take up the mantle of Captain America. And number two is Kitty Pride. In the midst of Avengers vs. X-Men, Kitty Pride, with her tech skills and power to phase through things, played a major move against Iron Man. In A and X, Kitty and Tony team up against the villain, the Brute. Tony tries to recruit Kitty, showing her around his place, but a sneeze from Kitty births some brood creatures with her power. Hours. Taking charge, Kitty guides them to where Tony's armor is and phases through the suits during the battle, inadvertently frying them all at once. This left Tony without his precious armor, all thanks to Kitty's unique powers put to good use. And at number one is Rogue. In X-Men Legacy number 267, Rogue's unpredictable mutant ability to absorb powers gave her the upper hand against Iron Man. When Tony Stark targeted the school to find hope in the Phoenix Force, Rogue absorbed the She-Hulk Hulk's powers, and let's just say, Rogue smashed. Enraged, Rogue amplified her strength with She-Hulk's powers and delivered a heavy blow to Iron Man's suit, a punch that literally went right through him, which should have ended the fight right then and there. However, when that didn't work, she just relentlessly pummeled him until his suit lay in ruins. Now, it's a good thing Tony was controlling the suit remotely because otherwise he would have been done for. Coming in at number 10, it's Batman. I bet you didn't expect to see this one on the list, and honestly, who would? I know who. Anyone who knows that Batman is Batman. In 1981's DC Special Series number 27, Batman comes upon the rampaging green rage monster. The Joker had tricked Hulk into believing that Batman was the enemy, and the Hulk ended up getting the Dark Knight in a bear hug where he almost broke the bat's back. But Batman busts out of it and uses a knockout gas. Now Hulk ain't really that dumb and he just kind of holds his breath until Batman kicks him straight in the gut, winding the Hulk and causing him to breathe in the gas. Yeah, it's probably unrealistic as hell, but it's a man that fights criminals in a bat suit fighting a guy that turns into a giant green monster because of gamma rays from a bomb. Tell me how that's realistic. Number nine. Thor. When Kal Borson, the serpent, sent down seven magical hammers that represented his seven magical followers to Earth, the hammer Null found its way to our lovely green friend, transforming him into Null, Breaker of Worlds. 
Hulkers. Now Hulk slash Null went a smashing, rampaging all over South America, bringing him into conflict with the Avengers, who he defeated and eventually with a solo Thor. When fighting Thor, Null teamed up with Angrier, Breaker of Souls, which was actually Ben Grimm, the Thing. So not only is Thor taking on the Hulk, who is more than a handful, but he took on the Thing, one of Hulk's biggest rivals, at the same time. And both of these guys were powered up by the magical hammers that they wield. Thor then proceeds to literally and temporarily take the Thing's life by throwing Mjolnir straight through him, leaving a massive hole in the Thing's chest. Thor and the Hulk then face off in an epic battle that ends with Thor managing to knock the Hulk into space, leaving Thor seriously injured, but winning the fight. Number 8, Wolverine. Wolverine actually made his debut in 1974's The Incredible Hulk number 181. He interfered in a fight between the Hulk and the Wendigo, which saw Wolvie and Hulk team up to beat the monster, but also saw a little kerfuffle between Big Green and the Angry Canadian. Now, eight years later, What If number 31 imagined what would have happened if Wolverine managed to take down the Hulk, which he did by clawing through his throat. Pretty nasty, but their nastiest bout was definitely in Old Man Logan. Following a huge conflict where the villains managed to band together and wipe out almost all the heroes, a pretty sinister Bruce Banner took over a section of California with his inbred kids, the Hulk Gang. In the last few issues of that story, in revenge for the Hulk wiping out his family, Wolverine went on the warpath and eradicated most of the gang. Banner then hulked out into this 30-foot tall, nasty Hulk and ate Wolverine alive, only for Wolverine to reform inside of his stomach and cut his way out. The Hulk would survive as a head on a metal body after this, only for the sole surviving Hulk gang member to decapitate him to save Wolverine's life later on. The living head would then be buried deep underground to keep it from ever coming back again. Number 7, Russian Batman. In this dystopian Earth number 30, where Superman became a tool of Stalin and his Soviet Union, Batman has become the most wanted man in Russia. As an adult, he became a blight on the Soviets and terrorized them all for revenge on Pyotr Roslov, the captain of the police who brought the demise of Bruce's parents. He became an idol for those who wanted to oppose Superman and his regime. Now eventually, Roslov turned on Superman and convinced Batman to take him down. So, he stole Wonder Woman, bound her up with her own lasso, and drew Superman into a trap where he then bombarded the hero with simulated red sunlight. He forced the weakened Superman into a cellar to lock him away forever, but alas, Wonder Woman managed to destroy her lasso and remove the generator powering the lamps. Unwilling to be locked up and lobotomized, Batman detonated a little boom boom that he implanted within his own small intestine, but before he passed, Batman revealed to Superman the truth of Roslov's treachery and got his revenge in a really, really roundabout kind of way. Number 6, Muhammad Ali. Undoubtedly one of the greatest boxers in the history of the sport, this legendary fighter has won some incredible fights, but what other boxer can claim to have TKO'd Superman himself? After aliens demanded that Earth's greatest champion battle their own warrior, Superman and Ali go one-on-one -on -one to determine who will represent Earth in the upcoming fight. With Superman temporarily depowered when he steps into the ring, Ali, with his superior skill, completely puts Superman in his place, with Superman falling to the mat after taking a hail of punches. Afterwards, the pair teamed up to help drive back the invading aliens, and the whole story was published in a special issue back in 1978 and reissued more recently in 2010. Number 5, Shazam. Now everyone knows that Superman is weak to kryptonite. It's one of his few main weaknesses. Another one of those rare weaknesses would be magic. Many magic-wielding superheroes exist in the DC Universe, but of all of them, Billy Batson's alter ego Shazam, or Captain Marvel if we want to be problematic, is one of the only main ones that can also compare on a physical level with the Man of Steel. Shazam has been sent out against the Man of Steel on many different occasions, and while his magic does give him a distinct advantage, the fact that he's actually a kid usually means that Superman can outthink or outstrategize him. But then, the magic kind of levels the playing field. Despite that though, Shazam has completely knocked out Superman in 1997's JLA issue 29. Now to be fair, he totally sucker punched Superman, but that was just the first punch. He then followed that up with a few lightning infused punches that completely floored the man. More recently though, in Batman slash Superman 2019 issue number two, the Joker infected several different heroes with Joker toxin, including Shazam, and he faced Superman mano a mano. 
And we get a hand-wavy reason for why Superman will never beat Shazam in normal fights. It's simply because every time he goes to punch Shazam, all he can see is Billy Batson, and he falters. Superman is just too much of a good guy to hit Billy, and so he gets hit much harder in return. Number four, Venom. Now, to be fair, this is back when Venom was not a superhero, but he is now, so fair game, I say. Superman and Venom cross paths in the DC Marvel All Access crossover event in 1996 and 1997. This encounter occurred when the two universes merged temporarily, causing confusion and displacement among characters. Venom found himself in Metropolis wreaking havoc and searching for answers. Now upon stealing a young woman, Superman intervened to rescue her. Their battle proved to be one of Superman's toughest challenges ever, resulting in one of his most humbling defeats. Venom matched Superman's incredible strength, withstanding the hero's attacks, and immobilizing slash blinding Superman with webbing, leaving him vulnerable. Superman used his heat vision to free himself, and he pursued Venom, but while Superman landed punches, Venom remained pretty much unaffected. With a vendetta against both Superman and Spider-Man, Venom nearly smothered Superman with his tendrils, pushing the hero to the brink of defeat. It took the combined efforts of Superman, Spider-Man, and Access, a multi-dimensional hero, to defeat Venom finally, with Access utilizing a sonic generator to exploit the symbiote's sonic vulnerability. Venom was ultimately vanquished, but not before showing that Superman had no idea how to handle the symbiote. Number three, Thor, plus the Avengers. The God of Thunder has taken on the Man of Steel before. During the JLA Avengers number two in 2003, Kal-El and Thor faced each other in a fierce battle. The Kryptonian was on the losing side of things until he managed to lift Mjolnir and even caught it mid-air. Kal-El won that fight by the skin of his teeth, but he was left bruised and battered. And that was more than enough of an opening for Thor's buddies to do what they do best. Avenge him. The Avengers' heaviest hitters, Iron Man, Hercules, Wonder Man, The Vision, and She-Hulk dogpiled on Superman and pummeled him until he was completely unconscious. Number two, Alfred Pennyworth. I don't care what any of you say, Alfred Pennyworth is the greatest superhero of them all. In the alternate universe where the Injustice games and tie-in comics take place, Superman has turned evil and comes to the Batcave to pay his former ally, Bruce, a brutal visit. After breaking Batman over his knee, Superman finds a new opponent when Alfred intervenes. It sounds like a fight that Superman would win in a heartbeat, but with temporary superpowers granted by a pill called 5U93R, which grants heightened strength and endurance, Alfred knocks Superman to the floor with a punishing headbutt before pounding his face, all while screaming about how disappointed he is in Superman and how Superman has hurt his family. Tell him, Alfred. Tell him good. Number one, Orion. Orion is a new god and the son of Darkseid, and as a hero with a dark ancestry, he is quite the conflicted do-gooder. He has many forms and he has many abilities. He exists beyond the normal multiverse on a higher plane called the Sphere of the Gods. Born on Apocalypse but adopted by the gods of New Genesis, Orion is in a constant war with his inner darkness and with his father, Dark side. Now Orion is repeatedly praised and stated to be a warrior with skill and ferocity second to none, and there have been more than a few times where he has faced the Man of Steel and brought the guy down quite a few pegs. In one story, Death of the New Gods, Orion comes to Earth believing that Hector Hammond had hidden inside Superman's subconscious. Seeing Superman as a threat to the universe, Orion begins the fight with a brutal sucker punch before completely walloping the Man of Steel out of a space station. He's been able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a sun-dipped Superman when the rest of the JLA couldn't do a single thing. He's been flown into the ground by Superman, who then speed blitzed the guy, and Orion just waited till Superman was finished, smiling the whole time before swatting him into the sky like a bug. He's moved so fast that he snatched up Superman before he or Wonder Woman could even react, and then he chucked the Man of Steel into a river. He's one shot knocked out Superman with his astro harness, grabbed him and then teleported away while saying how one day he will finally have a challenge, and that's all without reaching the full limits of his power. The guy is a beast. Number 10, Thor. Look, Wolverine may be a pretty quick to anger guy, he may go feral once in a while, but he is not an idiot. The problem is he seems to be rather prone to being mind controlled, brainwashed, and otherwise turned on his allies. One of those allies who quickly helped Wolverine back to his senses was Thor. Wolverine stands not even a slight passing hope of facing off against Thor and being able to come out on top, and yet in 2009 we still got the Wolverine vs Thor comic book. Essentially, Loki using his magic 
magic made Wolverine believe that Thor was actually his nemesis, Sabretooth. Wolvie did actually put a few licks in on Thor, having a greater amount of speed than the God of Thunder, but Thor has got uh, strength, durability, a massive unbeatable hammer, Asgardian physiology, control over lightning, oh he can fly, and uh, did I say he has a massive unbeatable hammer? Oh yeah, and he's a god. So, after he gets fed up with Wolverine's mad ramblings, he swats Wolverine down to the ground, flies up in the air, and calls down a massive lightning bolt that puts Wolverine down and knocks him back to his senses. Number 9. Black Panther In the aptly named Killable story arc, Wolverine deals with his own mortality as his healing factor is taken away from him. The force that got rid of Logan's power was also having a mind controlling effect on other heroes and the source looked to be pointing toward the home of Black Panther, aka Wakanda. Upon meeting Black Panther in Wakanda, he assumed the hero was under the control of the said virus, which was a dumb assumption to make, but superheroes have to fight each other, them's the rules. The thing about Wolverine is, his entire fighting style is based on the fact that he can take untold amounts of damage. He can be as reckless as he wants because he isn't really in much danger. But as T'Challa points out, that is not the case here. After slapping around Wolverine with some relative ease, he convinces Logan that he isn't indeed not mind controlled and that Wolverine is being the big old dumb dumb because he is. Number 8 Storm Storm is the kind of mutant who not only has the raw power to beat Wolverine, but in the story we are talking about today, she was able to reduce him down to a charred skeleton completely taking his life. This is the extremely short lived X-Men Forever. The series kicked off in an exciting fashion by having Logan wiped out with his remains being discovered in Central Park, and the heroes having a bit of a mystery as to who did it. While everyone assumes it was Sabretooth somehow, the culprit has soon revealed itself to be a now evil Storm, who completely wiped Wolverine's skin and flesh from his bones when he discovered her evil ways. Unfortunately though, fans wouldn't ever get the chance to learn why this happened properly since the series was cut short before the answers were actually revealed. Number 7 Iron Man We all know of the famous Hulkbuster suit, but would it just blow your minds if I told you that Iron Man has actually defeated the Hulk without it? Yes. That is right. In Iron Man issue 132, our Golden Avenger faced off mano a mano against the strongest green Avenger. And when I tell you this was one hell of a fight, I ain't lying. After an attempt at helping Bruce Banner results in the Hulk persona emerging, Tony dons his suit and protects his employees. The fight goes from Stark Industries to underwater to an Air Force base where the two basically play baseball with a luggage carrier and Tony's favorite jet. The resulting explosion stunned the Hulk and in that moment Tony mustered every bit of solar and reserve energy he could, overriding the safety protocols of his own suit to hit the stunned Hulk with a singular massive punch that knocked out Hulk and killed that suit of armor completely. Number 6, Robert Downey Jr. The MCU gave us a good look at just why Iron Man is no pushover when it pitted a rage off the hinges Hulk against the newly unveiled Hulkbuster armor created by Tony Stark. Now this fight is awesome. First off, the high octane speed of it keeps it engaging literally the whole time. Secondly, it perfectly shows how much of a threat the Hulk can actually pose and how absolutely terrifying he actually is. And thirdly, bouncing off of that, Robert Downey Jr. shows us both how utterly terrifying it would be to fight a monster like the Hulk in a suit of armor, but while still remaining incredibly hilarious and delivering every line with a perfect mix of fear, humor, and high stress that the 4 minute and 20 second scene deserves. Like how could we forget the go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep thing? That's so funny. And bonus points for the end of the scene when the Hulk finally sees the amount of destruction and pain he has caused, it like lets us into his mind just a little bit until Iron Man knocks him out cold. Number 5. Hyperion Hulk has only had a handful of battles against one of Marvel's iterations of a Superman-like character, Hyperion. And funnily enough, this time it's almost always Hyperion who comes out on top. Hyperion hails from a different universe from Earth-616 and is usually the leader of a group of Justice League-like heroes called the Squadron Supreme. Hyperion and Hulk were both on the Avengers at the same time and the two were pitted against one another in a couple of instances. In Jonathan Hickman's 2013 Avengers run, issue number 3, a brainwashed Hulk is sicked on a Hyperion and while the battle kind of happens in the background, Hyperion manages to punch the Hulk out of the Hulk, turning him back into Bruce Banner again. Now that that is a feat all of its own, but there was another fight more recently in 
Heroes Reborn number two by Jason Aaron. This story found a new Hyperion who had just wiped out Galactus by flying straight through his head, fought off against versions of Gladiator and the Imperial Guard, Mr. Beyonder, and a giant version of Ultron. The last thing he needed to do was stop the Hulk. Hyperion finds him trying to tell a group of kids about how he's not crazy, how history has changed, and how he's really sad, which makes it almost upsetting after the Hulk gets his hands on Hyperion's throat, and Hyperion invokes an executive order and uses his laser eyes to blow holes in the Hulk, taking his life two dozen times until he finally stops getting back up. Number four. Spider-Man. Now, in terms of raw power, Spider-Man stands absolutely no chance against the Hulk. I think his spider sense may give him some kind of advantage, but there's no way he's lasting long in that fight. Unless he gets a power boost in the form of, uh, I don't know, the Enigma Force turning him into Captain Universe, maybe? And that's exactly what happened in The Amazing Spider-Man issue number 328. The Grey Hulk, who, yes, is a bit weaker and logical compared to his savage counterpart, is hired by Sebastian Shaw to target Spider-Man. And money is always a good motivator. Unfortunately though, for the Hulk, Spider-Man has been going to the cosmic gym and hitting the cosmic weights. He lands some pretty heavy blows on the Grey Goliath and even blinds him with a new eye beam power. But when some kids are put in danger though, Spider-Man ends the conflict quick by punching the Hulk all the way into orbit and then flying up to save him before he suffocates. Then Spider-Man just stands all confident with his hands on his hips, kind of like this, but like more confident, you know what I mean? Number three, Havoc. Havoc, who you may know as the brother of Cyclops, found himself in quite the showdown with the Green Goliath in Incredible Hulk number 150. It all started with a little bit of a mix-up. You see, the Hulk thought that Polaris was his long-lost love, Jarella, the Princess of Kai from the Microverse. So in his confusion and a little bit of heartbreak, he whisked Polaris up a cliff, and Havoc, being the hero that he is and also Polaris' boyfriend, rushed to the rescue. In an attempt to fend off the Hulk, Havoc unleashed his powerful energy waves, but here's the thing. This the attack did absolutely nothing. It didn't really do anything to the Hulk at all. So it was looking pretty rough for Havoc until he spotted an opportunity. The Hulk, being just absolutely off the chain, decided to pick up a small mountain, like you do. And that's when Havoc hatched a cunning plan. He focused all of his energy waves like a laser beam aiming right at the Hulk's big green forehead. Now this seriously strained the Hulk as he grappled with the weight of the mountain that he chose to pick up like an idiot. The combined stress of the mountain and Havoc's energy waves got to be too much for the Hulk and he eventually passed out, dropping a mountain on himself. For Havoc, that is a huge win. Number two. Namor. Namor, the Prince of Atlantis, has a level of strength that I think surprises a lot of people, and it may be because his level of power is closely tied to his proximity to water. When submerged, his strength is unrivaled. He can even lift and throw massive and heavy objects like water-filled ocean liners. So if the Hulk were to challenge Namor, the smart move would be to battle on dry land. However, the Hulk's not that smart. In Avengers number three, the Hulk made the error of confronting Namor in the water. In a few panels, later, Namor managed to drag the unconscious Hulk to the shore. Namor's water-based advantage came into play once more in Tales to Astonish number 100, where he used it to defeat the Green Goliath. Their powerful blows generated a massive tsunami that destroyed an entire island base. Interestingly though, even in more casual contests, Namor has outperformed the Hulk. In an unconventional uh, power test, the two engaged in a game of underwater chicken in Incredible Hulk number 118, and neither of these guys chickened out as you might expect. But in the in the end, Namor emerged unscathed while the Hulk was knocked out completely, reverting to his form as Banner. And finally, in at number one today, it's The Thing. The Thing and the Incredible Hulk are kind of like the Marvel Universe's version of Rocky Balboa and Apollo Creed. I read an article that said that, and I think it's funny and I think it's true, so I'm using it. They share a complicated friendship filled with epic battles, usually resulting in a draw, or the Hulk will take the win. However, back in 1961, The Thing managed to secure a win. It's essential to note that the Hulk was in his gray or Joe Fixit form, which is a lesser known persona. Unlike the Green Hulk, this version, Joe Fixit, is more intelligent and has better reasoning abilities, meaning he doesn't get as angry as quickly. And we all know that the Hulk's strength amplifies with his anger, so Gray Hulk isn't as mighty as the Green version. Additionally, during this particular face-off, the Thing was in his super spiky form, making it a remarkable matchup. In 
Fantastic Four number 320, Doctor Doom goads Hulk into chasing after the thing, saying he's powered up and stronger than Hulk is. And you know that's gonna piss off the Hulk. Hulk sets out to New York to defeat the thing, but gets his butt handed to him. After a slog of a fight that will cost taxpayers a ton, the thing almost ends up putting the Hulk into the afterlife until he's caught off guard by this really random Hulk robot that just comes out of nowhere. It's weird. I don't know. Number 10, The Punisher. In the early 2000s, Punisher faced off with Wolverine in Punisher number 16 and 17. Essentially, The Punisher found himself in the crosshairs of Logan and he needed to buy himself some time without Wolverine getting in his way. To do this, Punisher blows off Wolverine's face with a bit of buckshot in Punisher number 16. Now, thanks to his healing factor, Logan is still standing with his face already starting to heal over his exposed adamantium skull. So obviously, that didn't buy The Punisher much time at all. Instead, in Punisher number 17, Frank Castle makes things just a little bit more below the belt. Literally, as he wiped Wolverine's gonads off of the playing field in a similar way to how he took off Wolverine's face. But of course, even this won't stop the mutant, so Frank Castle resorts to even more drastic measures. Needing the means to give himself a day or two at least before Logan will start coming after him again, the Punisher uses a steamroller to slowly but completely flatten Logan, and then he perks it there and walks off to do his business. If anything, I think this is kind of a testament to how powerful Wolverine actually is, but still, it happened. It was cool. Number nine, Spider-Man. It should be obvious, but you don't dare insult Mary Jane to Peter's face. In Amazing Spider-Man issue number 522, Peter is awoken with a call about a newspaper article claiming that Mary Jane had a little mm, entanglement, we shall say, with Tony Stark. Now obviously this is not true, and actually it was a setup by a villain, but that's not the point right now. Peter gets out of his bed in Stark Tower and goes looking for his wife. Along the way, he runs into Wolverine in a room with a very lovely high up view of the city. Now, Logan decides to start going on about how Mary Jane messed up big time, and after a warning from Peter to stop, he decided to comment on her lack of brains. This lovely little comment gets him thrown through unbreakable glass and a really colorful way to catch a cab. Number 8, The Hulk. The first rivalry Wolverine ever had in comic book history is with the Incredible Hulk. The Hulk is basically just a ball of increasingly strong muscle, and he just gets more and more strong the longer the fight goes on, and the more mad he gets. He can dish out basically untold amounts of damage. As for Wolverine, he can take untold amounts of damage, almost always coming back thanks to his incredible healing factor. Their rivalry began with The Incredible Hulk number 181 when Wolverine was first ever introduced, coming in between the Hulk and the Wendigo. Then in The Incredible Hulk number 340, Wolverine takes on the Grey Hulk, going into a berserker rage, ripping into the Hulk like never before. It is awesome to see, that is, until the Hulk heals and makes Wolverine one with the ground. The worst time Hulk defeated Wolverine though would have to be in a different universe, specifically the Ultimate Universe. Here, the Hulk, who was honestly a bit more of a villain to be honest, managed to completely rip Wolverine in half and toss the bottom half far, far away, giving Wolverine the challenge of trying to travel with half a body to reclaim his legs. Number 7, Molly Hayes. I feel like I don't talk about the Runaways enough, and that's a shame because these heroes are a huge hit for Marvel because they rock. Case in point would be Molly Hayes. Molly here was a huge fan of Wolverine's growing up. She was until she got to meet him. Sometimes Wolverine's angry, savage approach doesn't really work for everyone. And when you come running up yelling and growling at a super strong 10 year old who just wants to tell you how much of a fan she is of yours, popping your claws and being all weirdly drawn and stuff, yeah, it ain't gonna go well, which Wolverine learned the hard way. After asking Miss Hayes to stop screaming on account of his super sensitive hearing, Wolverine Wolverine ends up being suck and bopped 20 yards out of a church and face first into a snowbank. It's very embarrassing. Number 6, Wasp. This isn't just Wasp humbling Wolverine. This is Wasp humbling the entire X-Men team. During the original Secret Wars in 1985, the Wasp has been shacking up with Magneto. Now, before you get the wrong idea, this is all a ruse so she can figure out what the Master of Magnetism is up to. When he finally reveals it to the X-Men in issue number 7, Wasp immediately turns on Magneto and attacks. Now, with the X-Men wishing to stop her from doing harm to Magneto because they need him, they jump in to defend 
defend him. Wasp immediately jumps in to attack them back, and she leads this fight with a big old kick straight to Wolverine's hairy little face. She then bounces off him and lands solid hits on every single one of the X-Men before zipping out of there like a wet fart. Number 5. Spider Woman Spider Woman is a hero who for a long time was very underutilized and very underappreciated, and that all changed with Brian Michael Bendis and with the New Avengers. In the 2005 New Avengers, this group of heroes find themselves in the Savage Land on the trail of the psychic vampire Sauron, and they just happen to fall upon Wolverine. Well, what actually happened is that Luke Cage and Jessica were in the jungle, and Wolverine kind of snuck up on Spider Woman because, quote, he was being tracked and he didn't recognize their sense. Which, it's a silly reason, but it was also a silly thing to even do because Jessica immediately grabs Wolverine by the wrist, flips him on his back, and then turns his own claws on him, plunging them straight through his own neck. It's hella impressive, even if this was actually a scroll version of her at the time. Number 4, Squirrel Girl. Nobody beats Squirrel Girl. Doctor Doom, Thanos, Fin Fang Foom, Ego the Living Planet, even Galactus, they have all fallen to her might. So what good is Wolverine gonna do? None whatsoever. Now this was during a little sparring sesh that took place in New Avengers 2010, issue number 15, after Wolverine somehow beat Iron Fist in hand to hand combat. Iron Fist said he was fighting at a 3 at this time, but I, it's still pitiful. Wolverine calls up his next sparring partner, Squirrel Girl. After absolutely overwhelming Logan with a flurry of kicks and punches, knocking him on his keister, Doreen felt fully confident to turn around and gloat a little. This gave Wolverine the opportunity to get her in an arm hold, telling her to never turn her back in a fight. To which she replies, I know. And that's because Wolverine is literally surrounded by an army of maybe like 70 squirrels, all poised to attack him. Which forces his surrender to the all-powerful Squirrel Girl. Number 3, Beast. Again, Beast is strong. He's fast and he's acrobatic, but Logan has those traits as well, plus quite a few others. Which is why in a normal straight up hand to hand fight, you'd have to give this one to Logan. Unless Beast has got some plans in place or can otherwise use his great mind, he isn't likely to come out on top against Wolverine. Unless he's got some help. In the Here Comes Tomorrow storyline, Beast is taken over by an entity known as Sublime, who further enhanced Beast and himself by channeling the power of the Phoenix Force. All that power turned this evil version of Beast into a threat to everybody. Now Logan stepped up to take Beast on, but Sublime's powers completely negated Wolverine's healing factor and left him vulnerable. Sublime Beast seized the advantage and tore through Logan, leaving him without being able to regenerate. But of course, this was all cancelled out later by Jean Grey with some good old time travel. It was definitely a very violent and sticky end for Logan though, just saying. Number 2, Cyclops. The rivalry between Wolverine and Cyclops is well documented. There have been entire story arcs to do with their inability to get along. Ever since Wolverine came along, Cyclops just hasn't been as cool as he used to be, and that's gotta sting. While the argument of who can beat who comes up a lot, I think we all just have to look at the facts and understand that when it comes to pure power, Cyclops has the win 9 times out of 10. The guy's optic blasts have been shown to destroy entire mountains, let alone 5 foot 3 angry Canadians. While there have been plenty of times where Cyclops has blasted the skin off Wolverine and put him down, I think the most embarrassing of these defeats comes in 1963's Uncanny X-Men issue 115. Here the X-Men have made their way to the Savage Land, and thanks to Sauron, Wolverine gets put under some mind control. Now Cyclops seeing the danger this Wolverine poses, of course, has to end the threat, and he does so very quickly, blasting Wolverine right in the face, flipping him over mid jump, and landing him face first in a pool of water. Now, when Wolverine recovers for the second attack, Cyclops is not pulling any punches and simply fires a blast that sends Wolverine flying a good couple of hundred meters away. And finally, in at number one today, it's Magneto. Now, classic comic book fans all know that Magneto is not a hero. Over the years, he has begun to twist to become a hero though, and through that tiny little technicality, I'm going to talk about the time that Magneto completely annihilated Wolverine and reduced his entire character to a whole different level than almost anyone else ever did before. In the 1993 crossover event Fatal Attractions, Magneto was offering mutant sanctuary on his ship, the Avalon, and recovering from the legacy virus 
virus, he was planning to completely wipe out humanity, being opposed by the X-Men. Now Xavier, in a special Shi'ar suit, leads the fight against Magneto on Avalon. Magneto holds off everyone until Wolverine gets the drop on him. Now Wolverine makes it so close, slicing him across the chest just a little too close for comfort. This pushes Magneto over the edge. He turns the adamantium on Wolverine's skeleton into liquid and quite literally pulls it out of his body. This got Magneto brought down quick. It led to the rise of Onslaught, revealed that Wolverine's claws are actually bone underneath, and turned Wolverine into a completely feral version of himself. At number 10 is Alfred Pennysworth, who's only at number 10 because he's not technically a superhero, but that doesn't make this old man with a peg leg giving Batman an absolute beatdown any less entertaining. A decorated war vet, Alfred reaches a breaking point with Bruce Wayne's despondent demeanor. Then the unthinkable happens as Alfred, with unwavering resolve, delivers a resounding slap to Batman's face. Now Bruce, challenged, resorts with a defiant don't, but Alfred remains undeterred. And in a confrontation that defies expectations, Alfred, despite his age and prosthetic leg, stands his ground. He points out Bruce's lack of experience in war, delivering impactful blows that leave Batman spewing all kinds of red bodily fluids. However, a desperate Batman resorts to a cheap shot, targeting Alfred's fake leg to gain an advantage and putting Alfred on the floor. It's a surprising turn of events that prevents Batman from facing utter humiliation. The clash between the Dark Knight and his trusted butler reveals unexpected facets of their dynamic. At number 9 is Aquaman. Nobody leaves Batman gasping for air quite like Aquaman does. Their clash in the Legends of the DC Universe number 27 showed the relentless determination of Arthur Curry. See, despite Batman claiming victory, Aquaman's relentless slugfests of fists echoed through the pages and left an indelible mark on Batman's ego, leaving us all questioning the Dark Knight's dominance within the League. In recent encounters, Aquaman opts for a strategic shift abandoning the conventional blows for a menacing Darth Vader-style throat grip. Batman, with teeth bared and gritted, caught in Curry's grasp, is completely vulnerable to a fatal trident thrust. A twist of fate, however, as Wonder Woman intervenes, preventing Gotham's Guardian from becoming an aquatic feast for the Justice League. If you're enjoying this video so far, please support the channel by pressing like, subscribing to Top 10 Nerd, and ringing that notification bell. I would seriously appreciate it. It helps the channel get more views to more people, and uh, thanks for helping us out. At number eight is the Punisher. Enter Frank Castle, a no-nonsense vigilante who's armed to the teeth. In the 1994 crossover issue, Castle tests Batman's trademark patience. Channeling Ra's al Ghul's philosophy from Batman Begins, Castle asserts that criminals thrive on society's understanding. He brings this belief crashing into Batman's world, landing punches that resonate with unparalleled force. See, the Punisher's primal fear inducing aura props Batman to step in just before he dispenses justice to the Joker with a bullet. Yeah, you heard me right. Batman, the protector of Gotham, is compelled to save the Joker from the Punisher's lethal resolve, forcing him to quite literally bite the bullet. Enter a moment of raw intensity where the Punisher nearly executes the Joker as Batman, driven by an unfamiliar fear, intervenes just in time. Batman, shielding the crown prince of crime from a hailstorm of bullets, urging the clown to quote, run. Run for your life! Seems that even the world's greatest detective can be unnerved, and in this clash of ideologies, even the bat bows to the uncompromising Punisher. Number 7, Beast. For the longest time, I actually thought that Beast was one of the better heroes out there. And that's because I didn't know Beast, apparently. Beast is a dick. Dr. Hank McCoy is one of the eight smartest people in the world. And being smart in comic books seems to be a pretty easy path to being morally dubious. Don't get me wrong, Wolverine isn't a boy scout by any stretch of the imagination, but he still holds his morals. Wolverine and Beast were actually friends. Beast stuck with Wolverine during the schism event, and he was also on the side of the 
Avengers with Wolverine during the Avengers vs X-Men. But despite that, in order to deal with external threats to the new mutant nation of Krakoa, Beast has taken a position as the chief of the intelligence agency X-Force, which has almost completely cost him his morality. McCoy has chosen some questionably authoritarian actions to guarantee the Krakoan sovereignty, like sabotaging the country of Terra Verde, squirreling away funds to open a space station prison, and interrupting one of Wolverine's resurrections to attach an obedience collar to him and send him on clandestine operations, all of which was kept secret from the rest of X-Force. This ticked off Wolverine, which in turn ticked off Beast even more. He sent Wolverine on a mission so that he would be captured for an auction that Hank attended and then he literally showed Wolverine to the afterlife in order to resurrect Logan again in a primitive state and turn him into Weapon X. Where Beast sent him on more missions, Beast has become a literal villain and he just keeps getting worse and worse as time goes on. Number 6 Gambit as is usually the case between two popular characters, the raging Cajun, Gambit, and Wolverine have each actually scored a couple wins over each other. But one of the most humiliating defeats fell squarely on Wolverine's hairy shoulders. In Uncanny X-Men number 273, the two heroes decided to face off in the Danger Room, the X-Men's training facility. So obviously they weren't out to end the other's life or anything, but the only thing on the line here was pride. And Wolverine absolutely lost some this day. Though they initially looked even matched, Gambit gained the upper hand by making the danger room conjure up Lady Deathstrike. Logan was so distracted that he didn't realize it was a trick until too late. Gambit got Wolverine with a few staff strikes before knocking Wolverine on his back and pressing his staff to his throat. This even prompted a concerned Jubilee to randomly burst into tears over Wolverine's welfare. Looking at the panel now, it's, it's actually kind of hilarious. Number 5. Cat in America. It is no secret that Captain America is the most decorated soldier in the Marvel Universe. This is owing to his enhanced abilities, but it's mostly due to his experience, guts, and heart. He and Wolverine have had their fair share of battles, with the first one as early as 1941. And Caps usually come out on top. A large reason for Cap's ability to defeat Logan probably has to do with his discipline, as Logan tends to go berserk way too often in a fight, which leaves him prone to making a mistake his opponent can capitalize on. And that's all that Captain America is about. It is also worth noting that Captain America was the original Weapons Plus. He is basically the granddaddy to the source of half of Wolverine's power and training. We got to imagine that Cap has got a huge advantage over old Wolvie here. He even beat the snot out of Wolverine when Cap was turned into a werewolf, picking up Wolverine and chucking him into a group of other werewolves like he was a bowling ball. Number 4, Daredevil. During the Enemy of the State storyline, Wolverine challenged a lot of superheroes. During this fight, Logan was being forced to go after Daredevil in his own home. Now Logan was really being guided to take on Daredevil in the hopes of drawing out Elektra, but the fight wasn't as easy as Logan's controllers were likely hoping it would be. Even with the surprise attack in his own home, Daredevil was quickly ready for the fight. The odds were further stacked against Daredevil because Logan had brought along over a dozen of his new friends who happened to be ninjas armed with bows and swords. Daredevil handled it just like a video game and took out the nameless goons before moving on to the big old boss. But even then, he was just looking to get through to Logan rather than just taking him down. Daredevil did have home field advantage though, obviously knowing his own home. So when he got knocked down, he knew his weight set was nearby and he just smacked Logan in the face with a dumbbell. The blow was enough to break through the mind control long enough that the fight came to an end for the time being. Number 3, The Thing. The Thing is one of the most powerful heroes in the Marvel Universe, able to stand toe to toe with the Hulk in battle. He and Wolverine have had their scrapes and most of the time, Logan's been on the losing side. In one little altercation taking place in Fantastic Four 1961, issue number 374, Wolverine, Ghost Rider, Professor Hulk, and Spider-Man, who had previously taken the place of the Fantastic Four temporarily, were hunting for Johnny Storm, who had accidentally destroyed part of Empire State University. This led to an altercation between the four heroes and the actual Fantastic Four. When Wolverine went to attack Susan, Ben Grimm grabbed the Canadian and slammed him into the ground, calling him an arrogant little creep. But Wolverine in his rage used all his might and slashed Ben across the face, famously disfiguring the character. But the thing got his payback as he yells, you freaking little psycho, and then he whacks Wolverine with one punch, sending him flying through not only the wall, but through the adjacent building and straight into the next one over. Number 2, Deadpool. 
Deadpool and Wolverine first met in 1994's Wolverine number 88. While Wolverine may be stronger, Deadpool's speed, healing factor, his skill in combat, and his absolutely buck wild behavior has allowed him to get the drop on Wolverine multiple times and do a lot of damage many different times. In their first ever encounter, the Merc with a Mouth ambushes Wolverine while he's checking up on Garrison Kane, another Weapon X experiment. Now, during the ensuing fight, Deadpool earned his reputation as one of Marvel Comics' most brutal mutants by stabbing his two swords into Wolverine's heart and lungs. Now, while this typically would not phase the healing mutant, Wolverine had actually recently lost his healing factor during a bout with Magneto. Thankfully for Wolverine, his healing factor had begun to slowly return in the days leading up to this fight with Deadpool, allowing him to survive the wounds he'd suffered and win a rematch, but he did need help to do that. And finally, in at number one today, it's Spock. There have been a few characters that have stopped Wolverine in one move, but this one, this one really comes out of left field. In a crossover between the X-Men and Star Trek, Logan faced Mr. Spock. Face is kind of giving Wolverine too much credit though. Upon boarding the Starship Enterprise, Wolverine moved to attack Spock, only to discover that Spock, one, not only knew who Wolverine was, but Wolverine also discovered the effects of the Vulcan nerve pinch. In literally one quick move, Spock used the nerve pinch to knock Wolverine to the ground almost instantly. It's another case of skill winning against brute strength, and that's why Wolverine needs to learn a little finesse. At number 10 is Black Panther. So here's the deal, there have been quite a few instances where Captain America has faced off against Black Panther, and let's just say it didn't always end in Cap's favor. The initial clash between Captain America and the then Black Panther, Azuri, in Wakanda was an eye-opener. Cap was on a mission against Yahtzee spies, only to find out that they were already taken care of by Wakandan forces. This resulted in a confrontation where Cap, without his vibranium shield, faced Azuri and lost. Their subsequent encounters, especially with T'Challa, are equally intriguing. Tales of Suspense number 97 marked their first clash, where it seemed more like a test of Cap's fighting spirit rather than a serious showdown. Later in Black Panther number 24, it was yet another test with T'Challa hinting at his capability to overpower Cap in a real fight. Not to forget the Contest of Champions 2, where external manipulation played a part and T'Challa sensed Cap's lack of will to fight. The key aspect here is the intent. They've never faced off with the intent to eliminate one another. Black Panther usually has the upper hand, yet Captain America always puts up a fight. Their dynamic showcases a mutual respect despite their clashes. At number 9 is Wolverine. Cap and Wolverine, two iconic superheroes, have had their share of clashes over the years. They've been through more battles and challenges than most, and their determination is unmatched, but you see, even the mightiest can have their off days. Take that one time when Logan got his brain scrambled and went all rogue. When Steve Rogers tried to intervene, he quickly realized he was in for a world of hurt. Logan, out of his right mind, didn't hold back whatsoever. He absolutely pummeled Cap, leaving him unconscious. It must have really stung for Steve waking up to that after being taken down so swiftly. Just goes to show that even the best can have bad days in the superhero world. If you're enjoying the video so far, you can support the channel by pressing like, subscribing to Top 10 Nerd, and ringing that notification bell. At number 8, Iron Man. Iron Man is a tech-savvy and resourceful Tony Stark who used his strategic genius to set up a trap for Cap and his allies. See, Stark employed a fake distress signal, luring the anti-registration forces into a carefully laid plan. But Cap had his own plans too. As Cap and Iron Man came face to face, a handshake between the two became an unexpected move by Cap, who slyly placed an EMP device in Iron Man's hand, causing Tony's armor to shut down. What followed was chaos as Cap's allies attacked to escape the ambush. Stark, after his armor rebooted after a couple minutes, displayed his frustration by fiercely engaging in combat with his former friend, repeatedly striking Cap. The conflict escalated until Hercules himself intervened, preventing Cap from enduring further blows. The clash between these two iconic superheroes serves as a reminder that even the mightiest can be vulnerable to unexpected tricks and betrayals, emphasizing that in the intricate dance of heroism, no one is immune to moments of vulnerability. At number 7 is Superman. Batman has faced numerous foes, but none seem to humble the Dark Knight quite like Superman does. Now, despite Batman's meticulous planning and strategic brilliance, the Man of Steel
Steel consistently thwarts his best laid schemes and emerges victorious time and time again. Now, while it's clear that Batman was about to have the last laugh in the movie, in the comic books, it's typically Superman who delivers the final blow. For example, in The Dark Knight Returns, Batman is decimated body and soul by Superman's overwhelming power, where Superman crushes Batman physically and spiritually. Superman Batman number two exposes just what happens when the Dark Knight's meticulous planning and strategy ultimately backfires, nearly costing him his life. Even armed to the teeth with kryptonite in Lex Luthor, Man of Steel, Batman still faces defeat. Superman's sacrifice witnessed Batman's complete manhandling, albeit under Superman's mind control. Now, while circumstances may vary, the pattern still holds. When true to their characters, Superman prevails, leaving Batman's plans in shambles. Clash of these iconic heroes often leans in favor of the last son of Krypton, unfortunately for Batman. At number six is the Hulk. Oh boy, this one's gonna be brutal. In the 1996 crossover, Batman faced a behemoth green Goliath, and the odds were about as lopsided as a seesaw with an elephant on one end. The Hulk, a powerhouse of rage and raw strength, had Batman teetering on the brink of defeat. Yet, to everyone's surprise, the Dark Knight actually displayed an uncanny resilience. Dodging airborne cars and defying the laws of physics of precarious situations, Batman showcased a level of agility that defied his moral origins. The Joker, usually reveling in chaos, momentarily doubted Batman's survival, urging the Hulk to crush him into a paste. It was a moment of uncertainty that hung in the air like the impending collision of titans. But in a twist of fate, Batman unleashed a surprising tactic, boxing the Hulk's ears and actually disorienting the colossal adversary, which is quite surprising. The tables turned momentarily, but the Hulk's recovery was swift and furious. Batman physically outmatched found himself pinned against the wall by a massive machinery hurled by the green giant. Now, in the end, intellect did prevail over brawn, but not without leaving Batman physically battered by the sheer force of his much larger Marvel foe. At number five is Jason Todd. Batman's legacy is impeccable, but even the Dark Knight has faced some moments of vulnerability. Take Jason Todd, once Robin, who endured a brutally fatal encounter at the hands of the Joker's crow bar and rigged explosives, challenging Batman's ability to protect his own. Now, in the aftermath, Batman was haunted by guilt, and he preserved Todd's empty costume in the Batcave. But upon Todd's resurrection, he sought revenge, mirroring Batman's methods with a touch of fatal brutality, aiming to bring down both the Joker and Batman in one foul and vengeful swoop. Through meticulous planning, Todd bested Batman, momentarily seizing control. The apprentice turned adversary he orchestrated a plan that brought Batman to his knees, bringing the Cape Crusader face to face with the end of a loaded barrel, aimed squarely between Bruce's eyes. Now, ultimately, while Todd did win the showdown, his pride ultimately cost him the mission with Batman coming out on top. Nevertheless, this battle is a compelling twist showcasing that even the mighty Batman can be outsmarted by his own protege. In the intricate dance of heroism and vendetta, the line blurs and the student can become the master of humbling the indomitable. At number four is Wonder Woman. In the realm of caped crusaders, Batman stands as the icon of justice, but what happens when the tables turn. Wonder Woman, with her Amazonian might and unyielding sense of duty, humbles the Dark Knight in Wonder Woman the Hikatia. Bound by a sacred Themyscira ritual, Diana becomes the guardian of a remorseful unaliver, Danielle Wellis. Batman, the ever enforcer of Gotham's law, clashes with Wonder Woman over justice and morality. The battle that unfolds between them isn't just physical, but also symbolic. Wonder Woman, invoking the ancient ties that bind her, rejects Batman's man to hand over Danielle. The clash becomes a collision of principles, moral justice versus the eternal vows. The narrative adds layers to Wonder Woman's mythology, showcasing her physical prowess over the formidable Batman. In the end, it's not just rain-soaked streets, but the power dynamics that leave Batman beneath Wonder Woman's literal and metaphorical heel. At number three is Green Lantern. In the vast world of superhero showdowns, few moments stand out as much as the time Batman faced off against Hal Jordan. It wasn't a battle of gadgets or cunning strategy either. It was just a straightforward, old-fashioned, 
punch to the face. Picture this, Batman typically in control, caught off guard by a sudden, unrelenting right hook from the Emerald Warrior. It wasn't about complex plans or intricate maneuvers or even magic in this case. It was raw power meeting unexpected vulnerability. This story showcased Hal Jordan's strength, not just in constructs and willpower, but in a simple, well-timed punch that left the Cape Crusader on the ground. Batman's aura of invincibility was shattered at that moment, a humbling experience for a hero used to being one step ahead. Hal Jordan's unexpected uppercut spoke volumes about the potency of human connection, even in the midst of cosmic powers. At number two is Swamp Thing. In the vast tapestry of the DC Universe, the clash between Swamp Thing and Batman stands out as a peculiar chapter. You see, picture this. Gotham is typically a concrete jungle, but it was transformed into a leafy labyrinth by Swamp Thing's botanical prowess. Why? Well, it's a classic tale of love, justice, and the unexpected consequences of interspecies romance. Swamp Thing's wife, Abby, faced legal trouble for her amorous escapades with the Tree Man. The trial brought the Swamp Thing to Gotham, and Batman found himself ensnared in a verdant vendetta. Swamp Thing and his green allies delivered a beating that left Batman battered, but still breathing. Their motive was to ensure Abby's safety and make a point that Gotham's conventional weapons were useless against the forces of nature. In this arboreal encounter, Batman learned that even in his own urban fortress, nature could still turn the tables. And number one is Catwoman. This is the very reason why you never want to cheat on a crazy cat lady. Even if your name is Batman, now allow me to set the scene. Batman 355, it's 1983, and Gotham's alleyways witness the aftermath of a love gone sour. See, Selina Kyle, the infamous Catwoman, discovers Batman's new flame, Vicky Vale, and what follows is a visceral confrontation, a snapshot of heartbreak and vengeance. In a frenzy of emotion, Catwoman launches into a ferocious assault, culminating in a superpowered knee to Batman's jaw. The Dark Knight, typically composed, finds himself sprawled out on the floor and disoriented. Catwoman, momentarily unhinged, contemplates the line between lover and adversary, and as she hovers over the edge of tragedy, sanity prevails, sparing Batman from a lethal fate. But don't get it twisted, Catwoman, momentarily blinded by rage, contemplated a fatal finale. Bruce, she says, I almost unalived you, I can't say the word, but you know what I mean. I was that close, she confessed. This was a breakup with a lethal twist, a snapshot of passion turned pearlious. Batman, ever resilient, quipped about his robust jaw, the sole defense against Catwoman's momentary madness. Number 10, Rogue. The mutant rogue first started out as a villain in Marvel Comics. She was part of Mystique's Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, and one of their first attacks on the Avengers involved ambushing a recently returned Carol Danvers. Rogue, who was still learning to use her abilities, accidentally fully absorbed both Danvers' memories and her powers. The attack completely drained Carol of her powers and erased her mind, and then, to add insult to injury, Rogue immediately just chucked Carol off the Golden Gate Bridge. Luckily, Spider Woman was there and able to rescue her, and Professor Xavier was able to restore Carol's memories, but it wasn't complete. The actual emotional connection to those memories, as well as to her family and her friends, was gone. Carol remembered things, but it was more like watching a show about her life instead of living it herself. Carol regained her powers eventually, but Carol's life was destroyed by a scared young woman who then had to deal with the consequences of her actions and the harm it caused to both of them. Number 9, The Hulk. This one is hilarious, but it does also show that despite what some fans may claim, Carol Danvers isn't necessarily the strongest Avenger around. During 2013's Avengers run in issue number 39, during a little scuffle between the Illuminati and S.H.I.E.L.D.'s Avengers team, War Machine comes upon Doc Green, aka the Smart Hulk. Now as you can imagine, the Hulk is just a bit too much for Rhodey to handle, and so Captain America sends in Carol Danvers, and she comes in in spectacular fashion, crashing the Hulk into a massive crater and then pounding on the guy with all of her might, feeding him the left right left right to the point that she's even a little winded. But in that moment of catching her breath, we see the Hulk is just laying there, hands behind his head, chilling out relaxing before he says, feel better? And then he punches Captain Marvel so hard that she goes flying into the sky through a shield helicarrier and right out of Earth's atmosphere. And that is an insane punch. Number 8, Cyclops. 
With Cyclops being a mutant who can fire massive energy beams from his eyes, and Captain Marvel being a hero who can absorb huge amounts of energy, most people would have just believed that Carol Danvers would have any fight between the two in the bag. But Cyclops has something that we don't really think about very often. Tactical know-how. Or we can call it plot armor. You pick. Cyclops has been compared to Batman with his use of prep time. So, during Marvel's Contest of Chaos, where Agatha Harkness uses her magic to force the world's greatest heroes into combat against one another, Captain Marvel and Cyclops got paired off against one another. Now this took place just after a recent team up between the two in X-Men Captain Marvel crossover, Lord of the Brood slash Revenge of the Brood. With their battlefield being a small fishing village in Iceland, Cyclops' first attack on Captain Marvel results in her just absorbing the energy blast and not hurting her at all. Now for his next attack, he removes his visor and unleashes his full power on Captain Marvel. And again, this only makes Carol more powerful than ever before, but that was exactly what Cyclops was counting on. Now before Captain Marvel can make the next move, he reminds her that if she uses her powers now, she'll wipe out him, but also everyone else in not just Iceland, but all of Scandinavia. Just like she almost did in a pretty personal moment he learned about from their previous encounter. He basically blackmailed her. At number seven. Vision. In an alternate timeline straight out of a dystopian future, Ultron is calling the shots and the entire world is caught up in the crosshair. And our beloved heroes are grasping at straws for a way out. But here's the kicker. Captain America, usually the guy with a plan and a symbol of unyielding hope, finds himself at a loss. His iconic shield is shattered and with it his morale takes a heavy blow. Enter Luke Cage and She-Hulk. These two heavy hitters step up, boasting the kind of durability that makes them the best candidates for this critical mission. And as they dig deeper, they stumble upon the core of the chaos. But who's at the center of it all? None other than Vision. Ultron is using Vision as a conduit for all this mayhem. Vision is essentially unwittingly contributing to the Avengers' downfall with remorse eating him up inside. Vision is a figure synonymous with hope and virtue, inadvertently the pin of destruction in the Avengers and Cap's spirit. Vision's captivity under Ultron's control became the pivotal factor that tainted Cap's unwavering belief in a better outcome. At number six is Spider-Man. In a recent issue of The Amazing Spider-Man, the Marvel Universe saw a showdown that had fans buzzing. Spider-Man and Captain America going head to head. See, these two usually fight on the same side, but in this issue, circumstances forced them into an impromptu scuffle. Cap, in his diplomatic style, had tried to talk things out with Spidey, who was wanted for questioning by the US government. But Pete just didn't have the time to deal with questions for the government, as he's trying to rescue MJ from a dimension in which time moves a lot faster. In the midst of this confrontation, Spider-Man manages to pull off a move that even took Cap by surprise. He uses his adhesive palms to swipe Captain America's iconic shield, and then smacks him with it. Cap, a seasoned warrior, is definitely caught off guard. Peter's sneaky move buys him a moment to slip away. A moment that showcases how Spidey's fighting style is instinctive and unpredictable, making it hard for anyone, even a super soldier, to anticipate his moves. What this little skirmish shows is that Spider-Man can disarm even someone as skilled as Captain America in a rather unconventional way. Cap probably never thought he'd lose his shield like that. In the end, it's a reminder of how Marvel's characters can surprise us even when they're on the same side. At number 5 is Daredevil. Daredevil's unexpected victories over heavyweights like Captain America might sound like an anomaly in the superhero realm, but they shed light on his exceptional prowess. The blind vigilante may not possess Cap's brawn, but his unique radar senses and combat proficiency makes him a force to be reckoned with. He's not just a run-of-the-mill hero, he's taking on big league opponents like Wolverine, Spider-Man, and even Ultron, so it's not exactly a walk in a park to defeat the guy. Daredevil's strength lies in his paradoxical nature. While he may have fallen short against characters like the Punisher, his triumphs over seemingly invulnerable foes like Ultron and the star-spangled Avenger himself highlight his resilience and adaptability, testament to his unyielding spirit and unmatched combat skills. His victory over Captain America showcased the depth of Daredevil's abilities, proving that in the superhero realm, sheer strength isn't always the winning card. At number four is Gamora. What made this moment stand out was how she not only outsmarted Cap, but also managed to outmaneuver the entire Avengers. Drawing from her extensive combat experience across the vast expanse of the galaxy, she pulled off an incredible feat by deceiving her own comrades to obtain the Infinity Stone. Her motivation? 
It was deeply personal, seeking to liberate a lost fragment of her soul which was ensnared within the Soul Stone's grasp. Steve Rogers, in his valiant attempt, approached Gamora, hoping to reason with the most lethal woman in the galaxy. Unfortunately, she wasn't in the mood for negotiation. Using the immense power of the stones, she twisted reality, merging Cap and Doctor Strange into a grotesque, helpless amalgamation. They were reduced to mere spectators, unable to do anything but witness her manipulation of reality itself. An intriguing insight to the vulnerability of even the most iconic heroes when confronted by unforeseen challenges from unexpected sources. At number three is the Winter Soldier. In the MCU, the Winter Soldier's proficiency in combat proved a formidable match for Steve Rogers. What made this encounter truly compelling was the personal connection between the two. See, the revelation that Bucky Barnes, Cap's childhood friend, was beneath the Winter Soldier's mask. This emotional complexity heightened the conflict as Cap, refusing to battle his friend, demonstrated an unparalleled level of trust and belief in the core of their friendship. The clash wasn't really physical, but a test of Captain America's steadfast principles. He allowed himself to be vulnerable, clinging to the hope that his friend, even in the grip of the brainwashing, would recognize their bond. This selfless act, refusing to fight back against a lethal force, illuminated the essence of Captain America. Heroism. The absolute pinnacle of humility arose when, despite facing defeat, Cap clung to the belief in Bucky's redemption. The final scene where Bucky rescues Cap and leaves him on the riverbank is a poignant symbol of their fractured relationship, leaving audiences with a bittersweet conclusion. At number two is Tony Stark. Yes, I know I already brought him up, but I want to look at him again. In the heart-pounding finale of Captain America's Civil War, we witnessed a powerful moment when Steve Rogers, our beloved Captain America, faced a pivotal choice. You see, the clash between Iron Man and Cap reaches its peak as Cap manages to outsmart Tony and disable his suit. Now, what happens next isn't your typical superhero showdown. Here we witness a significant act of humility. You see, Tony, weakened and wounded, confronts Steve, claiming that Cap isn't worthy of the iconic shield, a powerful symbol tied to Steve's identity. Now, despite the injustice inflicted on his friend, Steve surprises everyone. He prioritizes saving Bucky over his personal desires and abandons the shield. This scene echoes a deep message about humility. You see, Captain America relinquishing his seal represents a moment where selflessness triumphs over personal attachment. Sometimes it's about prioritizing others, even if it means sacrificing something important. This selfless act amidst the chaos and the conflict of civil war stands out as a lesson in humility, compelling us to reconsider our actions and priorities in a complex world. At number one, is Steve Rogers himself. At the pinnacle of the secret empire event within the Marvel Comics storyline, a seismic collision occurred as the iconic Captain America was pitted against his benevolent Hydra counterpart. This monumental clash was a testament to the embodiment of ideals and a struggle between the quintessential symbols of American principles and a corrupted, twisted version of himself. The Hydra Cap, born from the sinister meddling of Red Skull with a cosmic cube, had plunged the world into turmoil, wielding a from formidable power with shards from the cube, and even wielding the mighty Mjolnir with the Hammer of Thor. This set the stage for an epic confrontation between the two embodiments of Captain America, representing conflicting ideology. Now, the authentic, unaltered Cap emerged triumphant. Despite the odds stacked against him and the seemingly insurmountable power wielded by his benevolent counterpart, the good old Cap prevailed. This victory showcased the resounding strength of unwavering principles and integrity over deception and corrupt influence. The story ultimately revealed the true nature of Captain America's character as the original Steve Rogers reclaimed his identity and smashed his villainous doppelganger with Mjolnir, signifying the restoration of righteousness over malevolence in an epic and symbolic triumph. At number 10 is Tony Stark himself. Perhaps Tony's biggest threat is himself. The story also ties into how the rest of the superheroes managed to forgive Stark after the whole Civil War thing. You see, during a showdown with Norman Osborn, Tony had extremists in his system, and Osborn wanted to take the secrets locked in Tony's brain, so Tony had to take drastic measures. Essentially what he did was wipe away his memories by giving himself a degrading neurological condition, not unlike an accelerated dementia, which would eventually wipe his brain clean. After that, they sort of hit the the reset button and rebooted Tony with an old backup of his brain from before all the Civil War drama. 
So this Tony hadn't got tangled up in all that mess yet, thus making him oblivious to his actions during the time of Civil War. The other heroes had to let go of blaming him because technically he hadn't done the stuff they were mad about. Even though, let's be real, he probably would have done it all over again if given the chance. Tony got a clean slate, but everybody knew he could mess up again. That's the thing about heroes, they forgive, but they don't forget. And with Tony Stark, there's always that shadow of doubt looming around. At number nine is Spider-Man. This is probably one of the most creative ways Tony's been taken out. In an alternate Back in Black timeline, tragedy strikes when Mary Jane becomes the victim of a sniper hired by the Kingpin instead of Aunt May. You see, in the original story, Aunt May survives the attack, but in this timeline, MJ was hit instead and perished instantly. Consumed by loss and rage, Peter Parker, fueled by vengeance, takes a dark turn, hunting down the sniper responsible for MJ's demise and ending him, confessing to Aunt May before adopting the black suit once more and targeting Wilson Fisk. Despite efforts from Iron Man and the Avengers to intervene, Peter's overwhelming emotions blinded him. He confronts Iron Man in a heated clash where Tony Stark attempts to reason with him. Ignoring Tony's pleas, Peter forcibly redirects Iron Man's own hand repulsor towards his chest just as he's about to use his repulsor ray, causing Tony to unintentionally destroy his own arc reactor. Pretty freaking clever. Exploiting this moment, Peter uses his webbing to strip off Tony's armor, rendering him defenseless. With Iron Man out of the way, Peter continues his pursuit of Fisk, leaving Tony unable to prevent the imminent danger posed by Peter's unchecked fury. If you're enjoying this video so far, please support the channel by pressing like, subscribing to Top 10 Nerd, and ringing that notification bell. And number eight is Cable. This one's super badass because it's yet another example of Stark's own genius being used against him. You see, Cable travels backwards in time to Earth amidst the Avengers vs. X-Men tussle, fiercely protecting Hope, whom he considers his daughter. In a confrontation with Tony, Cable urges him to back off, but Tony, being Tony, just refuses. The clash begins, showcasing Cable's plight as he's infected with a techno virus, slowly taking his life. But you see, Cable wears an Iron Man chest plate and fires a beam at Tony. And the twist here is that Cable snarkily notes that he's using Stark's own tech against him that Tony hasn't even invented yet, giving Iron Man a taste of his own medicine. After exchanging blows, Cable emerges triumphant, leaving Tony in his wake. Super fun to see Cable use Tony's tricks against him like that, all in the name of protecting his daughter. Number seven, Scarlet Witch. Now, for this point, we are going to be stepping away ever so briefly from the comics to talk about the MCU. Taking place in the Multiverse of Madness, in the alternate world of Earth 838, instead of Carol Danvers, this live-action Captain Marvel happened to be Maria Rambeau, the mother of Monica Rambeau and the best friend of Carol. She was certainly powerful, assuming she underwent the same process that gave Carol her powers. However, she was not powerful enough to face the Scarlet Witch. Hot on the trails of Doctor Strange and America Chavez, Wanda Maximoff of the main cinematic universe possessed her alternate counterpart and went on an absolute warpath where she wiped out this world's entire squad of Illuminati. To her credit, Rambo held out the longest of the entire team. After Wanda threw her through a wall and then wiped out Captain Carter, Captain Marvel came up and put up a good old fight putting her cosmic energy against Wanda's chaos magic, but she was overpowered and then squish squashed by a statue that wiped her out for good. Number 6, Spider-Man. In All Out Avengers issue number 5, we get to see Spider-Man not only take down Carol temporarily, but he happens to take down an entire squad of Avengers. Or at least he leads them on a merry chase and does more than anyone expected. Now Spider-Man believes that She-Hulk, Black Panther, Blade, Captain America, Thor, Iron Man, and of course Captain Marvel have all been brainwashed by a guy called the Grand Manipulator. And he has a device called the Resequencer that he's trying to get to a guy at M Empire State University who can help them. When the chase begins, he shorts out Iron Man's armor, he dodges over She-Hulk, and then it's Captain Marvel's turn. She grabs him straight by the throat and starts flying up, but then Spidey, out of nowhere, he does something kind of terrifying. Flicking a tiny little capsule into Carol's mouth and apologizing, the capsule activates a web attack that completely fills her mouth and throat with webs that catch her completely off guard. She's freaking out, unable to breathe, as he swings off telling her not to panic as it will dissolve in about 60 seconds. Number 5, Ratchet. 
Okay, look. Yes, this is a crossover of the Avengers and the Transformers. So we already have to accept that this is just for fun. But this defeat of Captain Marvel is kind of downright pitiful. So basically, as with any good crossover, our two teams of do-gooders, the Avengers and the Autobots, have to have a little fight when they first ever meet, which takes place in issue two of the new Avengers slash the Transformers from 2007. When the two go to clash in the first few pages, one of the first fights to take place is between Carol Danvers, who is in her Miss Marvel attire, and the Autobot medic, Ratchet. Not only does Ratchet actually defeat Carol, but he does so without even leaving his vehicle mode. When Carol goes in to attack, punching Ratchet's windshield, she ends up getting about halfway into his cab, going off about letting loose like the Kree warrior she is. And all Ratchet does is activate his airbags, completely trapping the Kree warrior with her legs flailing halfway out of the driver's side window as he says, and I quote, Standard human containment techniques do not always preserve the subject's dignity. It's utterly ridiculous and kind of hilarious and uh, embarrassing. Number four. Tigra. Taking place in 2006's Miss Marvel, specifically issue number 19, when the Puppet Master decides to use his mind control powers to force heroes to fight each other to the pearly gates, arena style, Miss Marvel, Sleepwalker, and